As we usher in 2024, World of Warcraft celebrates its monumental 20th year, a journey marked by the highs and lows with the recent Shadowlands era leaving many desiring for more. Yet, as this game that many of us grew up with steps into its third decade, a ripple of optimism stirs amongst longtime fans and new players to World of Warcraft. The burning question many people have been asking me, is it time to come home to Azeroth once again? And for the newcomers, is 2024 finally the time to embark on this legendary adventure? Wow's legacy is indisputable. Disputable. It stands as a titan amongst live service games, its two decade lifespan a testament to its enduring appeal. In a gaming landscape where AAA titles flicker and fade in mere weeks, WoW's persistent question of relevance in 2024 is nothing short of remarkable. But the true excitement lies ahead. I think WoW is poised for what could be its most successful year in recent memory, rekindling its magic with a surge in player numbers fueled by the dual engines of WoW Classic and WoW Retail. And let's not forget, both versions of the games are yours for the taking under a single monthly subscription. And so, to truly grasp whether World of Warcraft in 2024 deserves your time, one must delve into the three pivotal forces shaping its future. First, there's the Dragonflight effect, showcasing a seismic shift in Retail WoW's approach from the wreckage and disaster of Shadowlands. Then there's the Medicine effect, where the expensive World Soul Saga, spanning three expansions, promises to be a narrative feast that we have long craved. And lastly, the resurgence of WoW Classic rejuvenated through its diverse game modes, beckons old and new players alike. And in this video, I'll unpack all three factors, piecing together why World of Warcraft in its 20th year might just be the adventure you have been looking for. First up, let's talk about Dragonflight, which is the current retail WoW expansion as we step into 2024 on the 1st of January. Though if you're tuning in towards the end of the year, however, the war within might be your current retail WoW expansion. But more on that later in this video, let's talk Dragonflight. You see, Dragonflight isn't just another expansion, it's a game changer. Its design philosophy strips away the mind-numbing task that drove so many players away in BFA and more so in Shadowlands. Finally, Retail WoW in Dragonflight allows players to hop in and out of the game as they please. Gone are the days of endless joy-killing chores to fetch 100 pine cones every day for your NPC just for that 0.1% of additional player power. The absence of this monotonous task is a breath of fresh air, something that majority of Dragonflight players will agree on. And Blizzard has shown a commendable shift in listening to player feedback, extending beyond class and spec to the very core of endgame mechanics. They removed some of the most complained about dungeon M plus affixes in the past few years, necrotic, inspiring, explosives to name a few. Remember how we've been voicing our dislike for necrotic since battle for Azeroth? Two expansions later, Blizzard finally tunes in, switching gears towards a more player-friendly approach. Each Mythic Plus season now introduces a fresh rotation of dungeons, keeping the experience vibrant and new per season. The real jewel in WoW's crown though has always been its endgame group content. And here's where the magic happens. Blizzard has reimagined endgame play, allowing you to engage at your own pace. Just like how we are finally free from the shackles of the Jailer, we are also now free from the claws of the FOMO machine, otherwise known as the fear of missing out, that has been a long core part of the retail WoW experience. And for two decades now, WoW's PvE endgame has been top notch. The issue was never the endgame content itself, but the tedious task that came with its recent history, especially in Shadowlands. With Dragonflight, we finally say goodbye to borrowed power, bloated systems, and the like of Torghast tiring chores that once stood between you and the content you actually enjoyed doing like Mythic Plus and Raiding. The community has shifted towards a more laid-back approach where raid logging and weekly Mythic Plus runs are the norm, aligning with what the majority of players have been asking for since Shadowlands. And personally for me, this has allowed me to focus on aspects of the game I genuinely enjoy not just grinding for player power endlessly, but being able to express my joy via my choice of endgame content, in my case, Mythic Plus Keystones. In case you're new to World of Warcraft, this is an endgame mode where the dungeons scale in difficulty, challenging you to adapt and strategize. The beauty of the M Plus system is its infinite replayability. 
as the Keystone's levels rise indefinitely. But besides Mythic Plus, raids continue to dazzle. It was one of the most tail-biting close contests that we have seen between Liquid and Echo, underlining Blizzard's knack for crafting compelling raid encounters that remains unshaken and unchallenged even after two decades of making raid bosses. And if PvE isn't your thing, Retail WoW's PvP world is a realm unto itself. If you are a long-time returning player, know that they have even introduced solo ranked PvP queues, a feature long sought after by players of the past. While it's not without its balancing challenges, the consensus is clear. PvP solo queue is a step in the right direction, bringing a fresh dynamic to WoW's already rich history. Dragonflight has also turned back the clock, reviving a classic-inspired talent tree system that has been generally well-received by most retail players. This new yet old-school vibe ushers in a warm, nostalgic glow, making us bid a not-so-tearful farewell to the Covenant systems of Shadowlands. Whilst combat is zippier and more delightful than it's been in ages with the new talent tree setups, bar a few specs that probably still needs a rework. Speaking about these specs that need more tender loving care from Blizzard, I must say that Blizzard has been rolling out class revamps at a never seen before speedy pace. Just Dragonflight itself, we have already seen class wide revamps to mages, paladins, demon hunters, rogues and more to come. Remember the old expansions where we had to twiddle our thumbs for 9 long months, waiting for a fix with the next major patch for your spec? Those days are gone thanks to Blizzard's new approach of sprinkling in 0.5 and 0.7 patches in between the major ones, which they now proactively communicate ahead of time. And I can tell you having played WoW for 20 years, Dragonflight is the first time I've actually seen Blizzard publish a rough calendar schedule of content patches and respective updates to come. That's a game changer. Speaking about updates, Blizzard also seem to have upped their game in terms of quality control and responsiveness. It's like they've got their ears to the ground, finally listening intently to player feedback. Their turnaround time on certain hotfixes seems way faster, a stark contrast to the sluggish pace of the past expansions. Now I must say, another big shift is that of leveling in retail WoW, because the leveling process in Dragonflight was an absolute blast the most fun I've had in ages at the outset of an expansion. The introduction of the vibrant new zones is just the tip of the iceberg, it's the accelerating addition of flying, dragon riding to be more precise, that truly showcases Blizzard's commitment to valuing our time, something very different from the vibes of Shadowlands. And here's the thing about mounts in MMORPGs, they are not just fancy digital steeds to get you from point A to point B, they are an opportunity, a golden chance to inject fun into the mundane task of transversing vast digital landscapes. In WoW, the dragon flying mounts have transformed travel into an avenue of expression and entertainment as you maintain momentum through the diverse terrains, soaring and swooping down the game elevates a significant chunk of your playtime from a mere transit to an enthralling experience. It's a stroke of genius really, marrying fun and function in a way that feels both essential in a 20 year old MMORPG's questing experience. Dragonflight's successful adoption of physics based mount isn't just a cool new feature, it's a heartbringer of how I think the future of WoW will evolve. Mounts can, and absolutely should, be a source of joy in the game. The solo questing content in Dragonflight, enhanced by the thrill of dragon riding, is a testament to this. Gliding over breathtaking landscapes at breakneck speed, Gaining altitude on the back of a majestic dragon adds to a layer of excitement. It's not just about getting from here to there, it's about the journey, the graceful navigation through changing landscapes and the momentum of flight. It's not just the destination, but the ride that gets us there. Just look back at the epic screenshots you have kept over your 20 years of playing World of Warcraft and you know what I mean exactly. But I think the most important of changes for Dragonflight is just its general direction and philosophy. Dragonflight emerges not as a spectacle of new features, but as an expansion to heal old wounds. An interlude where Blizzard seems to have paused to recalibrate. It's as if they've decided to use this expansion as a chance to fix everything that was wrong with WoW that drove record amounts of players away during Shadowlands. Listening to the developers talk about Dragonflight, it was evident that their aim wasn't to replicate the soaring highs of past glories like the Legion's Class Order Halls or the Artifact Weapon System. 
No, this was different. The focus was crystal clear for Dragonflight. They were rolling up their sleeves to lay down a robust groundwork for WoW's future. The WoW dev team's vision for Dragonflight is a testament to their commitment to longevity over the flashy, transient, short-term wins. We're talking about the first major UI overhaul in a decade, a complete reimagining of the talent and profession systems, the nuts and bolts that will hold together the grand foundation of retail WoW for years to come. And let's be honest, the WoW team is on a mission to win back our trust and admiration, and they are going all out. It's evident in the way they have ramped up their communication swiftly and innovatively, a stark contrast to the team that brought us Shadowlands. And yes, many of the faces might be the same, but their recent endeavors reflect a changed ethos, a transformed spirit. They're not just creating, they're listening, evolving, and most importantly, showing us they care about the game as much as we do. Now, Dragonflight might have set the stage, but the true crescendo for WoW in 2024 is solidified with the triumphant return of Chris Madsen to the WoW franchise. This man, a veritable legend who once graced the stage with revealing many of our favorite WoW expansions, made a comeback at BlizzCon 2023 to announce not one, but three upcoming expansions all woven into a grand overarching narrative called the World Soul Saga. The first of this trilogy or expansion, The War Within, marks the beginning of this new era and is set to release in the fall of 2024. And the effect was for all to see. Chris Madsen is nothing short of a rock star in the realm of Azeroth. His presence on stage, where he masterfully played the crowd with rhetorical questions and sheer charisma, showed that he's more than just an announcer of new adventures. He's a maestro at exciting the crowd. And I think the WoW community yearns for the Madsen magic, associating him with the golden era of World of Warcraft. His influence is evident in the shift towards the World Soul Saga, spanning three expansions. This strategy harks back to the iconic trifecta of classic WoW, Burning Crusade, and the Wrath of the Lich King, which culminated in the legendary Arthur storyline. That build up to a high stakes finale was a key factor why Wrath of the Lich King achieved some of the most impressive player numbers in MMORPG history. Chris Madsen and his team seems intent on recapturing the appeal of the Wrath era, a feat that has not been replicated in recent history. Legion is probably the next most beloved expansion after Wrath, and while it may not have followed the three-part formula, it did mirror the high stakes of Wrath of the Lich King. The defeat of Sargeras in Legion was a fitting conclusion to a saga that began in Warcraft 3, where he was portrayed as the ultimate villain. In many ways, Madsen's return is not just a nod to the past, it's a promise of a future where WoW returns to its former glory, captivating the hearts of Azeroth denizens with epic narratives and unforgettable adventures. And if Dragonflight was the healing salve for WoW's past wounds, then the War Within is the springboard for Blizzard's daring leap forward. The expansion introduces Warbands, a term that's essentially a glamorous way of saying a calm wide progression, something that the player base has been clamoring for. The roar of approval at BlizzCon when Warbands was announced was a testament to its anticipated impact. Warbands isn't just a feature, it's a visionary stride towards establishing evergreen content. It paves the way for all future features, drops, and achievements to be conveniently account-wide. Dragonflight's shift towards alt-friendliness, cutting down on the grind, was just a prelude. It gave Blizzard the nudge needed to embrace a new philosophy. Your progress is reflected in your account, rather than a collection of separate characters. And as we eagerly await more details, it's clear that Warbands is a strategic move to boost game retention. It makes juggling alts less a juggling act, and more of a seamless transition. Dragonflight hinted at this with its discounted currency upgrade system for alts, and Warbands might be able to take it one step further. Imagine a world where it's possible to transfer gear from raids or mythic plus to your alts from your main, although I'm sure with some reasonable constraints like lower eye levels, etc. Even so, this approach trumps the discouraging task of gearing up your alts from square one, which was the norm back in BFA and Shadowlands, where you were doing household chores that you dread for the Jailer just to craft your mandatory legendary on your ults. Removing barriers to play ults in a big way, that's a win for the community and is a sign that Blizzard is listening. And then there's the loading screen for Warbands, a small but immersive touch. 
Watching your alts casually hang out on this screen adds a layer of engagement. Imagine unlocking a new loading screen or home for your warband to hang out as you conquer new challenges like achieving Keystone Master. The possibility of customizing the warband screen is like dangling a carrot. It's a motivating incentive for players and it's one I'm personally excited to chase. Now at BlizzCon, another news that sent waves of excitement through the crowd was the introduction of hero talents. These are not your garden variety talent trees from Dragonfly. They are a whole new breed steeped in class fantasy themes. Blizzard is offering a tantalizing buffet of hero talents and this time, you're invited to sample and switch between everything with virtually no cost. A delightful departure from the more rigid systems like Covenants from Shadowlands. The essence of these hero talents? To sprinkle a little more of that magical class fantasy flavor onto each class drawing from the rich history of WoW's iconic archetypes. The What's Next panel at BlizzCon was a showcase of some wildly imaginative hero specs. Picture yourself as a rider of the apocalypse death knight, a Templar paladin. It's like stepping into the shoes of legendary Warcraft figures. And these ties beautifully into the theme of returning to Warcraft's roots. With names like Dark Ranger, Deathbringer, Keeper of the Grove and Archon, it's easy to envision players declaring I want to be an Archon in the War Within. It just has a nicer ring to it versus I want to main a Priest in the War Within. Of course, the big question hanging in the air is whether Blizzard can balance these hero specs talents without dropping the ball. Dragonflight though has already set a precedence. Remember the initial skepticism about balancing the new class talent trees that they had to create from scratch for all classes and specs? I think most people would agree that Dragonflight's class talent trees were a resounding success. Given that the balancing of new class talent trees is a Herculean task, compared to these additional few rows of hero talents in the war within, I remain hopeful that these new hero talents will be embraced with open arms in the upcoming expansion. Now, the war within also is set to reveal another dazzling facet of endgame content, Delves. This is essentially instance content where you brave the adventure alone or you team up with four other comrades. And here's the kicker. It's role agnostic, meaning you can complete it regardless of whether you are a tank, a healer, or DPS. And unlike pugging for Mythic Plus, you don't have to deal with the hassle of scavenging for missing roles or players. Blizzard is decking out these soloable delves with seasonal goodies, mounts, achievements, pets, turning them into an experience that is appealing to the solo players in World of Warcraft. The idea is that as you navigate towards the end of your run, a trove of treasures await. Alongside puzzles and objectives that is meant to be engaging gameplay to solo players, or a small group of friends. In addition, each season in Delves promise a fresh twist with new NPCs, adding longevity to the experience. Blizzard is really stirring the PvE pot here, adding a dash of innovation that caters to everyone, from the hardcore collectors and veterans to the casual newcomers of WoW. Delves is a bold step into uncharted territory, and I'm all for witnessing that new era in WoW. The game is two decades old now, and appealing to fresh solo players makes complete sense, as that also gives them a chance to try out WoW for themselves before taking on maybe the more difficult group endgame content. Delves is also the answer to a very strange paradox in MMOs. Players are drawn to the massive communal worlds of MMOs, yet sometimes yearn for solitude in their adventures. It's a similar appeal that drives the popularity of solo endeavors like the Mage Tower, Transmog Farming, or even the solitary journey of hardcore classic WoW. There's a certain charm in having solo challenges to aspire to, challenges that allows you to bask in your achievements without being bound to the whims and fates of fellow players. If Delves can rise to become the mythic class for the solo players, it would be a game changer. For those tired of the nature of M plus parks or being booted or overlooked for dungeons, Delves offer an appealing alternative. The potential of Delves is there for all to see. It's a bold experiment by Blizzard, a foray into the new realm of possibilities, and I for one am eager to see where this path leads. As the new expansion unfurls its wings in 2024, it brings with it a familiar range of content we have grown to anticipate and adore in WoW. Uncharted zones whispering untold stories, dungeons that beckon the brave, raids that challenge the mightiest, and a parade of dazzling new gear and trinkets. Yet, the journey doesn't end with the war within. 
on the horizon, the expansions of Midnight and the last Titan Shimmers, promising to weave their tales into the tapestry of WoW in the years to come. But more importantly, to build that epic finale of the saga that would hopefully recapture the glory days of expansions like Wrath and Legion. And speaking of recapturing the glory days, it's time to talk about the original glory days of WoW. I'm of course talking about the resurgence of WoW Classic. For newcomers or those returning after a break, the range of classic WoW offerings might seem to be a cause for confusion. So let me explain the various classic experiences, all that is also housed under the single WoW monthly subscription for retail and classic, but more importantly also explaining why each of the WoW classic experiencing is stamping its unique buzz on the WoW community. Now first up, there is no doubt that WoW Hardcore has been a massive success. For people foreign to WoW Classic Hardcore, this is really WoW Classic with a twist of high stakes. The idea is simple, one life, one chance. If your character dies once in the game, they are dead for good. What might usually be a routine leveling journey suddenly transforms into a high stakes adventure. Each step into a building, every enemy you engage, every venture into a cave, each is laced with a thrilling yet dangerous edge, where one slip or mistake will be your last. And here's an unexpected twist in WoW Classic Hardcore. The nature of the game has also resulted in an unseen level of cooperation amongst players in years. It's as if the intense risk of permanent character death has gave way to the idea of teamwork amongst strangers. WoW Classic players don't just cross paths, they form spontaneous alliances echoing the primal human instinct of banding together for survival. In this world, camaraderie is born from the shared knowledge that the death is always one misstep away. Baths are exchanged like secret handshakes as players pass by each other, healers become the bringer of life, topping off health bars of random strangers. And when someone bites off more than they can chew off with enemy mobs, it's not an uncommon sight to see a fellowship of players rally to their aid. This sense of unity, the pulsing heartbeat of the community, revives the essence of what an MMORPG is meant to be, a massive multiplayer online experience. Classic WoW Hardcore has rekindled a spark of magic, a reminder of the days where these virtual worlds are less about solo quests and more about the collective journey, where every player's fate was intertwined with that of their fellow adventurers. In these realms, we are reminded that sometimes the real magic of WoW isn't in the quest we complete or the enemies we conquer, but the human connections that we forge along the way. Naturally, given the high stakes of permanent death, WoW Classic Hardcore might not be everyone's cup of tea. For those seeking a less heart-stopping experience, the new classic mode that was announced at BlizzCon might be more up your alley, specifically the Season of Discovery. This mode, while sparing you the fear of death, puts a fresh twist on the WoW Classic experience. Imagine the classic era WoW, now peppered with never seen before gems, talents, abilities, and discoveries across Azeroth, hence the name. These hidden discoveries are not mere equipment. They actually unlock new abilities and roles for each class, injecting a dose of variety and novelty into the game. Picture a tanking warlock, healing mages, a reimagining of roles that shakes up the classic gameplay. The first phase of Season of Discovery caps at level 25, with each subsequent tier released down the line upping the level cap and bringing new content. As the Season of Discovery unfolds in the first season, players will first level to the level cap of 25 and then dive into acquiring the best gear for that tier. This includes revamped dungeons like Black Fathom Deeps, transformed into a raid encounter for level 25s, complete with brand new bosses and loot. Even Ashenvale gets a makeover, turning into a battleground reminiscent of a mini Alterac Valley, complete with faction leaders and enticing rewards for PvP victories. This, I think, is Blizzard's foray into the Classic Plus territory, a delicate dance of preserving the core essence of Classic WoW while adding new original layers but in the construct of Classic. The genius lies in how they introduce these changes. Classic WoW by now is a game many have deciphered with strategies and specs long since having been mapped out optimally. But these new layers and discoveries, they are like entirely new stirring up the community to explore, experiment, and collaborate in ways reminiscent of the days where ThoughtBot was the go-to guide long before the era of WoWhead. This is because Blizzard is shunning a public test realm for this rollout, preserving the essence of discovery. 
This isn't just a game, it's an exploration. A journey back to the roots of MMOs, where the joy lies in uncovering new runes and talents, crafting new strategies, and reshaping the world as we know it. In the season of Discovery, every player is both an adventurer and a pioneer, charting unknown territories in a familiar land. And the newfound abilities aren't just for show, they also redefine gameplay. Your Warlock or Rogue can now step into the shoes of a tank with defensive and taunt abilities, while mages find themselves in the role of healers with healing abilities. And Blizzard isn't stopping there. The season of Discovery will unfold in four distinct phases, each bringing its own endgame challenges and class metas. And I think it's fair to say from the first season that started at the end of 2023, players are relishing in the thrill of hitting the level cap, discovering new class runes, and tinkering with builds using low-level items, reminiscent of solving a brand new puzzle or game that used to come only with new expansions in the earlier days of World of Warcraft. Beyond Hardcore and the Season of Discovery, the relentless march of WoW Classic continues unabated. The progression servers, having spent time in the icy realms of Northern and Wrath of the Lich King, are now setting their sights on the seismic shifts of Cataclysm. This is a call to come home to those adventurers who for one reason or another skipped the Cataclysm chapter back in the days. Perhaps they were still catching their breath after the epic finale of the Arthur storyline, or maybe life just led them away from Azeroth for a while. Cataclysm re-enters the scene, much like an old friend with a new story to tell. It brings the usual fanfare, elevated level caps, unexplored starting zones, fresh abilities to embody, and a trove of dungeon and raids. These are the landscapes and challenges that if you have journeyed through them in the original Cataclysm, might now feel like familiar territory. Yet they beckon with the purpose of nostalgia, a chance to relive or rediscover what was once left behind. And for those who tread these grounds in days past, it might just be a brief walk down memory lane rather than a prolonged expedition. But for others, Cataclysm might not have been an expansion you played back in the past, and classic Cataclysm now is ripe with the excitement of first-time exploration if you skip the expansion back then. Now, I also like to talk about some additional considerations for World of Warcraft in 2024. We all play MMOs for different reasons, and I know there's a good number of you out there that identifies as a collector. Another thing that WoW has going for it, it's the transmog system in-game. It's a fashionista's dream, a treasure trove where two decades of weapons, armors, and mounts await your creative flair. You can don gear that radiates sheer coolness, mixing and matching particle effects with your weapons to create a look that's uniquely yours. And Blizzard knows this aspect of the game has huge appeal too. If you are a returning player, Know that starting in Dragonflight, Blizzard introduced a new feature, the Monthly Trading Post, which has revolutionized the way you acquire eye-catching cosmetics and mounts. For example, the Celestial Steed, once a gem in the crown of the cash shop, now gallops within the reach of every player, attainable just through playing the game. Whether you are a PvE enthusiast or a PvP warrior, you earn points passively that can be spent on purchasing rewards like the Celestial Steed, allowing you to earn them in the ways that best suit your playstyle. And here's a thoughtful touch with the trading post, the ability to freeze items that is unique to the trading post each month. No longer do you have to watch in despair as coveted items rotate out of reach. This is a stark contrast to the FOMO inducing tactics of previous expansions, a refreshing change from the days of Shadowlands, where the fear of missing out was the buzzword. And in 2024's WoW, the transmog endgame is meant to be casual fun, a celebration of style and play, a testament to Blizzard's evolving philosophy that joy comes first, even down to the way you dress for battle. Now, some of you watching this video might be entirely new to WoW as well, so I think it's important to cover the solo experience as a brand new player, someone looking to just dip your toe in the water and just to check out World of Warcraft, to just see what it might be like. If you're peering into the World of Warcraft universe for the first time, you're standing on a threshold of the vast, sprawling, epic journey. Picture it, 20 years of adventures, tales, dungeons, and raids, an entire world waiting to be explored. In 2024, you can choose from 13 classes, each branching into mostly 3 specs each, summing up nearly 40 unique playstyles you can choose from. But let's rewind it to where all it begins for a solo new player the leveling process. It's the cornerstone of any MMOs and in WoWs, it's an initiation into a universe two decades in the making. To ease you into this grand old game, Blizzard crafted the Exile's Reach, a starting zone absent in the original WoW. It's a gentle introductory zone 
a guiding hand leading you through the basics and smoothly escorting you to level 10. The new player experience is more than just an introduction. It's a well-crafted, welcoming embrace into the world of Azeroth. It demystifies the daunting lessons, making the start of your journey as a solo player in WoW way more approachable. Looking back at the 20 years of World of Warcraft in 2024, from the gritty trials of classic hardcore to the exploratory unknown of the classic season of Discovery, to the soaring adventures of Dragonflight and the War Within, it's clear that modern World of Warcraft has deliberately opened up a series of different paths, inviting each of us to experience its worlds in our unique own ways. Now think back to those bygone days, some 20 years ago when we stood in line overnight at the game stores, eager to collect our WoW installation disc. Could we have ever imagined in those moments of anticipation in the cold, that two decades later, WoW would not only reign as one of the most beloved live service games and MMORPGs, but also stand on the brink of one of its most successful year in recent history. If you enjoyed the video, do smash the subscribe button. We are almost at 100,000 subscribers. Your help will go a long way. I will also keep you posted going into the alpha and beta for the War Within. You don't want to miss that. And if you are a new or returning player to World of Warcraft, I provided a list of free resources for user interfaces, add-ons, and other tips that you need to start this game. Do check out the pins in the description and the comments below. It's time for you to come home in 2024. I will see you in Azeroth.